Joining. Thanks to everybody for joining. Um, love to get a little bit audience participation here. If you guys are uh, so inclined, we have a chat feature you guys can use. If you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to go ahead and chat, uh, ask questions. We'll try to answer those as they come up. We do have a QA section as well. If you have a longer question you want to ask or something a little bit more detailed, go ahead and fill in the QA section. Be happy to take those as we go and uh, answer those either as we can throughout the presentation, or we do have a QA section at the end where, where Tim and John will be answering your questions. So feel free at any time to go ahead and fill in information there. As everybody's kind of getting warmed up for the day, hopefully everybody's kind of back, fired up, ready to be at work. I know uh, it was a little bit of a struggle to get out of bed this morning <laughs> after a long weekend. I, uh, I definitely appreciate everybody being here. And uh, if you're coming from the home office, if you're working from an actual office, if you're watching this offline with your toes in the sand, good on you. Thank you for watching us and uh, it uh, make sure you get some sunscreen on there. We're going to go ahead and kick off our presentation today. Just a few housekeeping items to take care of uh, before we get going. Um, for everybody joining us, first again, thanks. Uh, there is the chat. There is the QA feature there. If you do have things, uh, feel free to ask uh, as we go along here. We have uh, two different uh, co-hosts with us today. The Nuts and Bolts series is really about uh, helping you guys, right? Uh, helping you guys to understand some of the technology partners that TapClix works with, um, the integrations that we have with our system, and why they're so successful in what they do, and why it was so important for us to integrate them with our systems, and what you can do to leverage those to get better results out of all the things that you're doing. So Nuts and Bolts really is about rolling up our sleeves, diving into the details, and showing you guys kind of great new opportunities that are out there, new features, new technologies that we think are really going to benefit you in, in, uh, in your day-to-day -day activities with your clients, with the brands you deal with, uh, et cetera. So thanks everybody for coming and, uh, and going from there. At the end, like I said, there's going to be QA at the end uh, as well. But after this, we, do, we are recording this. And so we will be sending this out to everybody who registered. So if you didn't catch something, you have to leave early. Don't feel bad about it. We will send you a recording of this afterwards. And there is a special one-time only offer uh, that will be coming out in that email. We'll reference that a little later on as well. Uh, so anyway, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, we have Tim and John here. Tim represents IOVOX as a CRO. He is in charge of all great things um, regarding IOVOX. And I think if you're not familiar with IOVOX, you will be very, very soon here. Uh, but as the title says, we're talking about 100% attribution, and IOVOX is the way that we're really bringing that to you guys today. They make phone calls uh, useful, valuable, and actionable. I think that's uh, three very great adjectives to describe what they do, and we'll dive into some details there. John is joining us from level seven, and when John is not helping kids uh, with offensive line tactics or defensive line tactics... He's heading up Level 7 uh, Agency that really helps connect people with brands in really unique and specific ways uh, using innovation at every step along the way. So John is going to be bringing his vast experience and knowledge and creativity to bear um, against the, the call solutions we're talking about today. He's going to present kind of from an agency perspective and a brand perspective how some of these technologies work and how everybody can benefit from them. So John, Tim, thanks guys for, for coming today. We're super excited to jump into this with you guys. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Glad to be here. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. Over the weekend, uh, I went back into the 80s archives. And so <laughs> you'll see a few of these 80s references come out, uh, maybe 70s references. Uh, we went deep, deep into the archives for you guys today. So I hope you enjoy them uh, if you get the references, but old school, new school, really you know, what we're talking about today is attribution, but there's always so many different ways to look at it. Uh, for most agencies taking time um, to really delve into the details of their, of their brands, I'm not sorry, not their brands, the campaigns is really what they're all about. And for brands connecting up with their customers through a phone call or through some sort of personal engagement is really critical with a lot of them making sales. So, you know, we're in e-commerce now and so much of e-commerce is done in a touchless environment, but there are some longer sale processes that really require that hands-on personal one-on-one -on -one relationship to build those 
sales to work them through the funnel. And with so much emphasis placed on digital attribution and time spent on emails and videos and social media, et cetera, we're always looking at other ways of building models into your current campaigns that help you close more business. A call tracking is one of those ways uh, that we think is, is really going to be, I don't want to say innovative because calls have been around forever, right? That's the old school, new school thing. But the way that IOVOX brings their new attribution technology to bear um, against the old school calling methodology, I think is going to be really interesting and, and a real eye opener to everybody here and, and who's watching on how this can be implemented across the board to make massive changes in, in your attribution and in the conversion numbers that you're looking at. If you guys are new to this series, Nuts and Bolts is really where we offer you know, insights into the importance of new things that we're bringing to market and new metrics and, and new opportunities. So thank you all for joining. Um, and thanks you guys for joining again here with us. So that's where we are um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the kind of format for this. Um, with calls, you know, one of the things that we think about most often is kind of the robo calling thing and, and uh, you know, bringing uh, things to the market and, and calls that we're not really excited about. But just like email, calls are something that are really critical. And in this world of digital, right, the ability to track calls, I think, is one of the most important things. We have all these things that lead up to the conversion process, right? We've got banners, we've got ads, we've got all different kinds of things. And then it gets to the phone call, and then most of our models just break down entirely. We have no recording of the call. It's like everything leads up to the call, and then there's this huge black box, and then the call, and then the deal closes somewhere. And, and that black box is really what we're trying to explore and, and look at today, right? What happens in that call? What can we do to make those details more actionable, more visible, more trackable, so that we can apply the proper attribution to it? Um, because you know, we always like to joke here, if last click attribution was the only thing that really mattered, then 100% of all of our budgets would go into Google and nothing would be spent anywhere else. That's not the truth, right? We all know that there's a process that people go through in, in buying something from us, right? The funnel, they move their way down through learning and experiencing. Um, so the call tracking, the calling aspect of it is, is one of those interesting things. Tim, from IOBOX's standpoint, you know, how do you guys present calls into digital agencies when they're like, well, aren't, isn't call banks and all that kind of stuff old school? Don't you have like people with headphones and things you like plug into the wall? <laughs> so when you're talking, how do you help them understand the old school, new school aspect of what IOBOX is trying to accomplish with calls? Yeah, sure. And it's something that's still pretty common too. And believe it or not, the easiest way to describe what we do is we're like Google Analytics for phone calls. And when you think about that, you know, traditional call tracking that's been around for 25, almost 30 years is you simply assign unique or local numbers to each different ad source or each different you know, channel, basically, that you want to track and different variations of that, whether it's traditional one-to-one -one static numbers, which would be one number per campaign or dynamic numbers where it replaces the number out per either user session or source base. But when we're getting into the full picture, that also causes other problems because of the nature of spammers and things uh, of that too, where they're going to, I'm mean, sure Kevin, you've received a number of different spam calls on your, your cell phone and John today, I'm sure I probably had five or six today. Now imagine if you had tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of numbers for your clients, right? So it can be an issue and there's spam protection and things like that. But one of the biggest things that we've learned is that we build products and develop services based off of client needs and client requests. And biggest thing that we look at when dealing with the new digital agency is number one, make sure you turn the lights on. How are you getting credit for everything that you generate? One of the probably best examples we have is a client in the UK is a, a number one or two, depending on who you ask, largest uh, property portal. And they were getting a two to one call to um, kind of web form submission um, that they weren't getting credit for. So once they actually got the data, saw what's going on from a call perspective, it made a lot of sense to say, okay, let's get some more visibility into what's actually happening. So usually it starts something as simple as that as Google Analytics for phone calls, understand their current situation, and then really deep dive into specific customized solutions for our clients that relates to either client retention 
improving branding, which we can touch base on, uh, or really the most common one is how do we grow revenue, right? Which is what it's all about is, is growing our businesses. Yeah. So John, yeah, that th this is the next question, right? Is anybody out there, does anybody actually answer their phones anymore? You guys have worked with so many different channels uh, you know, and, and brands in different channels. Are people answering the phones? You know, are, is this part of what you're going out to market with? Can you give us a little, you know, maybe one or two examples of customers that have looked at phone calling as part of their overall plan and the successes they're having? Yeah, it's funny. One of the uh, the primary, you know, I guess industries we serve at level seven is the audiology industry. So uh, hearing aids and, and, and hearing aid purchasers. Um, so when we look at that market specifically, it's a much older market, right? So um, specifically, we had a client that didn't use any call tracking on any of their campaigns. Um, they relied specifically on web forms and chat bots and things like that. Well, you know, before call tracking, you know, they came to us, they're like, okay, you know, we've got these web forms, we've got these chat bots, um, we're converting right around 24% of those contact forms to an actual sale. Um, they come to us, they're like, you know, those aren't great numbers. And I said, you know, guys, you have to look at the demographic specifically, right? The demographic, you know, the average age of a hearing aid buyer is 74 years old. So when we look at that demographic, we go, okay, you know, they are not native to contact forms and chatbots, right? They're native to phone calls. Um, hell, they probably remember the, the old, uh, the old turn dial phone, right? <laughs> Rotary. Um, the old, yeah, exactly. The old rotary phone. So, um, you know, a really cool stat that, that we've seen after implementing call tracking for them, um, you know, one, they're averaging right around 20, 25 calls a day with their call tracking because they've got, you know, a, a, a fairly high budget and they're still getting, you know, those contact forms and those chat bots, you know, but the phone call close rate is actually 81%. So they've taken their close rate, you know, from a contact form standpoint, that was at 24%. And now they're at 81% with phone calls. So, you know, I think it's a really good example of somebody, you know, that wasn't considering call tracking as a necessity, because the marketing department was run by much younger people. And, you know, us really coming in, looking at the demographic and going, you know what, call tracking is an absolute must for you. Um, just because that demographic is not native to digital. That's massive 24. I mean, sometimes you, you implement something and you like, okay, well, I'm going to get a 5% boost or 10% boost. 24% yep. conversion to 81% conversion. 81. Yes. Well, apparently people are listening, right? People are picking <laughs> up the phone. <laughs> they absolutely are. Well, and, and, and I think if we look at it, Kevin, in this age of, you know, everything's digital and nobody really talks face to face anymore and, and things are, you know, all done through, via text message and things like that. You know, I think what's going to happen is, you know, things are going to come full circle, right? Where people are going to want to have that human to human conversation instead of talking through a computer. So I think we're, uh, I think we're on the precipice of that right now, quite frankly. You know, one of the things we've talked about in this program before is kind of the new normal that we're in, where buying, buying behaviors have changed so significantly People aren't able to go out and do the things that they've done historically. Sometimes they're, they're afraid to go out or they're restricted from going out. Tim, is this just for the long sale cycle, right? We, you and I have talked offline about you know, mortgages and, and things that do require kind of longer explanations, but it seems like this is for everybody in the new normal, not just some of the longer sales cycle things. Well, it's longer sales cycles one, but uh, anytime it's a higher ticket item, like a vehicle or a property or a complex buying process, like we talked about with mortgage. So even though you do, you know, not to name a name, but I guess we will like a certain mortgage company <laughs> that wants to do everything uh, digitally and manually and make it so easy to be pre-approved. Well, at some, at certain point when they're doing the underwriting, they're going to need somebody to hold your hand and walk you through that process. Um, it's becoming very obvious too that things have changed in our world, right? With the pandemic and everything going on, people working from home. And uh, some of our, if not most of our, our uh, 
largest customers are in that uh, property or automotive portal slash marketplace worlds. Um, and they actually even switched last year from using um, browser information as far as eyeballs and viewers and things like that, people spending time on the sites to calls to help forecast their businesses because what they were seeing is there's a lot of bored browsers out there, people looking at cars, people looking at property, and they're sitting around just you know playing around with a laptop. But the closest you're going to get to an actual conversion is a call, right? And it's always, it, it has been and it continues to be. So when you actually want to confirm that a vehicle is there or a home is still available or you know, a mortgage, or if you want to speak to somebody at a medical practice or whatever it might be, you're going to phone somebody and you want to talk to somebody. So that hasn't changed. And it's really across the board, not just for those high ticket or complex situations, but anything that needs to be personal or people want to touch base on from new acquisition to customer service to follow-ups. I mean, it just really is, it's always has been and still maintains to be one of the main forms of communication. It seems like one of the things that has surfaced out of the pandemic is an increased need for customer service, high level, high touch customer service, because we're all so disconnected. And, and that is one thing where even strong e-commerce companies, e-commerce companies who have a real strong self-serve portal aren't successful unless they have that strong customer service component to it. And it seems like the phone interface is one of the strongest ways to have that personal connection with large organizations becoming personalized, right? And extending that customer service feel, that personalized one-on-one -on -one experience down to the customer when they can't come into the store, they can't shake your hand, they can't you know, talk to you across the counter, they have to do something else. And another way of personalizing is, is through calls uh, like what you're talking about here. So this could it, work it great. Also, Kevin, it, help, it also helps to circumvent some of the complex situations that we inadvertently set up as buyers, or I'm sorry, as, as sellers, right? So we have multiple customers that you know, can give you two examples off the top of my head. One was a call center. And when the call would come in, and they spoke 17 languages, the first one was press one for English, press two for Spanish, press three for, and people were hanging up. So inadvertently, even a call center kind of messed up, for lack of a better term, that customer experience, right? So mm. there's different ways that you can address those solutions too through call tracking and through services like IOVOX, which is we were able to identify the, brow the language they were browsing in, right? And it was, they dealt with travel and things like that. So if you're browsing in French, we were able to connect you directly to a French speaking agent. So think about how many steps that took out uh, and that helped them to not just improve their connection rate, but improve their conversion rates and sales and so on and so forth. But there's simple things you can do in call tracking. That's not just the old rotary dial phones, but you apply the same kind of telephony, um, no, sorry, the same kind of technology to telephony experience to circumvent issues or complex buying um, situations. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So as we move towards the IOVOX solution, um, I told you I was going to bring a reference to the 70s <laughs> with $6 million man. I don't know if anybody gets that reference or not. Um, so you guys are building something that's you know, stronger, better, faster than, than historically was available. Um, talk to us a little bit about, uh, and this is a question that just literally just came through the chat, some of the... Um, some of the metrics, some of the key metrics that you guys are being able to bring forward um, as you, you know, claim are, are kind of the Google analytics uh, of the call tracking. And then I think one of the other key aspects we talked about offline was the low cost aspect to it. And I know we'll get into that a little bit more when you're doing the demo, but I think that's one of the, the, the hugest points that really struck me was the efficiencies that you bring, not, a, not only in kind of the upsell, um, or you know, increased sales that John talked about going from 24% to 81% close ratio, but um, the cost of implementing new phone numbers, et cetera. So maybe two questions, right? Some of the analytics and then maybe touch on, on phone um, number, I don't know what you call it now, uh, creation or something like that. Sure. So the first one, if you think about statistics too, I think one of the most um, underutilized statistics that we can look at is anybody that is generating multiple impressions for their clients are missing out on branding opportunities. So one of our clients is currently sending about 1.5 million whispers per month to their end user clients on behalf of one of their other 
to the end user client from a client, if that makes sense. Um, and what we've done for them is we created, it's called a whisper feature. So um, this client originally was uh, struggling with um, uh, brand perception. They were also struggling with their trust scores and, and things like that too, that people didn't necessarily know this client. But what we've done is each and every time that phone rings to one of their agents, this is a real estate portal. So each time a real estate client picks up the phone and says, you have another great lead from our client, right? So as you look at that, that's an untapped resource for that client of 1.5 million times per month to brand their offering and also mm -hmm. to remind them who sent them that lead. Um, for anybody that's worked in the uh, multifamily housing space or property space too, you're familiar with cards when they say, how'd you hear about us? Did you hear about us? The first one is Google. Second one is, you know, this site, that site, so on and so forth. Well, Google is always the number one. So if you switch the order and ask those questions again, it changes everything. So this is a way too that you can actually brand and build into their psyches that each time they're picking up the phone that you're getting credit and really understand that those leads are coming from you so that you can have different discussions when you talk to your clients because they realize that. I think the other thing that we look at too is just from that customer journey as it comes down and you look at impressions versus calls and you look at conversions from each or really dig into the kind of in-call analytics, which you can do through some of our speech analytics and conversational AI type products is we generate leads that you're not getting credit for. Meaning if I call on a vehicle display page for, you know, auto trader UK, which is one of our clients and a 2010 black Range Rover. Well, Oh, that black Range Rover is sold. Okay. But we have a white one in stock. Do you want to see a white one? Great. So we can then share with them that we generated a lead that came outside of that particular listing. Um, few of the other stats that we can get into as well. And John, I'd love to hear from you as a, as a client versus uh, Iolox talking about it. Um, but you talked about low cost and two of the biggest cost drivers, Kevin, in any call tracking provider, because we're not unique in supplying call tracking by any means. We just do it a little different. We pride ourselves on innovation. But our newest product, WebConnect, which we'll talk about today, what is again derived from our clients' request, who now have people working from home and they're making calls not just on a landline, but mostly it's a cell phone or they text or chats or a tablet or a PC, and there was no way to necessarily make those calls. So we created this product, which is simply click a button and you put it on the screen, generates a real time call and uh, gives you the ability to connect and have all the same functionalities as call tracking, recording, insights, which is our transcription features and things like that. Um, but by eliminating the phone number, you eliminate one of the major cost drivers. So for example, any client that has, let's say 10,000, 100,000 numbers on a, on a portal or a marketplace or you know, your digital agency, 100,000 times anything is a big number, right? So that eliminates one of those big cost drivers. And the really nice part about it too is it also aligns with most of our clients' revenue models, which is it's purely uh, usage-based and foots to, you know, nobody has an issue calling or paying for something when it's an actual lead that was generated, right? So even the end users. Um, the other piece about it is it now opens it up from just, you know, premier clients. You know, if you have, let's say 10,000 or let's say you have 10 clients and two of them are your premium clients, you're willing to do more for them. This feature now allows you to open up to all your clients, right? So as you start adding buttons, it doesn't have an additional cost. So if you say 10 of my clients, here's their 300 numbers each, I'll pay for those, but I don't want to open this up to everybody else. Well, you're really losing attribution. You're also losing proof to talk to those clients to help retain those clients, but also put them in a new program and help increase their revenue and their traffic through additional services. So it's truly something that works, not just from like a number perspective, but it works to expand that either quote share of wallet with your clients or your, your full service offering across the board. Uh, and two, it's a true global product. And some of these emerging markets that we deal with uh, internationally can be extremely expensive for traditional call tracking. This is a product that works everywhere. We currently have uh, numbers in 130 countries and WebConnect opens up the rest of the world for us. That's amazing because having basically a free phone number means that from an agency perspective, agencies can recommend new places to put phone numbers that they've typically never put phone numbers before because of the cost aspect of it, right? So you're able to re-envision these web pages for your brands and for your customers and allow people to connect in locations on the site where they've never been able to connect before. So you're able That's to right. A-B test things in, in new and unique ways and bring, bring that experience forward 
that has historically not been available. That's basically what you're saying, right? Yep. And we've actually run it against traditional numbers as well, where you have both. And we did see a lead increase of about 16%. So when you actually gave people options, great example of that too, which I thought was very cool, was we've all, we've all built sites for our clients. John, I know you have as well too when you're doing this, right? And on each one of them, we all have a contact us form. Well, as opposed to just having a traditional contact us form, you click, it opens up a you know landing page and you do a form fill and submits that way. What if we give the client three options? So you give the prospect three options. One, click to connect immediately. Two, click to schedule a call back. And then we have another service that'll do that tied to the same button. Or three, do the traditional form fill. These are different ways to improve communication and just open up to really what matters to the end user, which you know would be any of us or used to working from home. Instead of me doing a form fill and hoping I get a call back, I, can, I can't tell you how many times I've done that now after working from home for 17 months. You press something on the screen, you click, and you're like, oh, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Because we're also used to this, right? Zoom. We're used to Teams. We're used to WebEx or whatever form people use, Google Meet probably. But we're all conditioned to do that. So why not give that opportunity um, to the prospects through things like our contact us pages? Yeah, and so often it's a big question mark, right? I fill out this form. I hit submit. And then it goes into a black hole. Am I ever going to get anything back from anybody ever? Or who knows where that goes, right? And especially right. if I have something that's more urgent, more pressing, you know, a lot of the brands have brought the chat bot forward, but sometimes the chat bot implementation, if you're using full AI for that is, is a little limited. Um, and, or you get somebody on there who may not be able to deal with your specific need. You want somebody on the phone. Um, so now these brands have different options. Uh, that's fantastic. John, you're, are you seeing that uh, some of the brands you work with are putting phone numbers next to chat or are there new and unique ways that you're being able to implement phone numbers now that you've traditionally not been able to do? Well, you know, like, like Tim was saying earlier, the, the, the web connect feature is, is one of those things because I think you know, and, and Tim, you hit on this, the options for people, right? So, you know, let, let's just talk about landing pages for a second, right? Historically, you know, there's a, there's a contact form and there's only a contact form, you know, yeah. in the agency space, there's a lot of talk about, you know, you don't want other links in that landing page. You want right. one conversion point because that's, that's going to be it. Well, what we saw is if you only have that one conversion point, you're losing a lot of potential conversions because maybe that's not what is native to them. Maybe that's not the way they want to interact with your brand. So what we've done is we've started to implement some of those uh, web connect numbers and then as well as, you know, a chat on those landing pages. So kind of going against the traditional, you know, convert on the contact form model and have a couple of different points for them to contact on is I think important, especially in this day and age. Hey, you're a revolutionary, John. I don't even know what you just said right there. My <laughs> mind is like blown at this point, right? <laughs> Something else on a landing page besides the form field? Besides a contact <laughs> form. I know it's a crazy concept. Unbelievable. Right? Unbelievable. <laughs> But that's what we're all about is bringing kind of new and unique, innovative ways for, for people to connect. And this is, this is definitely breaking that mold. So I'm super excited to, to bring this conversation to you guys. So we're at the point, uh, Tim, if you're ready, just to kind of give a walkthrough of people on how easy it is to set up their campaigns in IOVOX. Are you ready to, to take over the steering wheel here? I am. All right. I'm going to stop sharing here and uh, let you have at it. All right. Let me just go ahead and share here. So I thought what would be interesting to share here first is, uh, first off, make sure you can see my screen. Can you guys see the screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And, and for everybody on there too, I apologize. I'm running two devices. I got headsets in. So if you don't see my face when I'm talking, it's because it's going through my phone, but uh, not much to see here anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing I wanted to share too, in particular as it relates to WebConnect, because we're talking about how is 100% attribution even possible, right? So um, the first piece of that is when you think about traditional call tracking setup, what you're going to use is either set up a number behind the scenes, which we won't get too much into today, but with the web connect feature, other people have done things like dynamic number insertion, right? And there's two different flavors of dynamic number insertion, which one would be how to set up it on source based, which would say, Hey, this came from Facebook or this came from Google or whatever it might be. The other one's session based is I want to know 
Kevin came to me through you know, Google and these keywords and here's a referring site and this is where the last click attribution came in, right? So what Web Connect does and how this works, it's a simple line of code that you're seeing here that you put on your site and this represents as a button, which I'll show you an example here in a second. As the button gets represented, any other key attribute or thing you'd wanna know from that session, because we have the whole user ID and the whole user session captured in this feature, um, you can see and you can eliminate the need for any kind of fuzzy logic and usually how dynamic number replacement works is you create pools of phone numbers and you have to have X number of phone numbers in the pool per user session, concurrent user session, so on and so forth. With this, straightforward, you add the button, you add the script and you add whatever details you wanna capture to this and that's as simple as it is. You get some script per button, we set it up internally the same way as you would a phone number uh, and you can have all those same features. To see what it actually looks like, I have a demo page up here. I try to minimize our faces here so I can see it. Um, this is just a site we created to showcase how it would look. Um, you can make this look like a traditional call us. This could be a floating button to go with the screen. Gives you total flexibility and customizability um, however you'd want it set up. So as the first example, and this will ring my cell phone, so we're not gonna show that. Um, you'd show the phone number coming in. Uh, I'll stop that for a second. You simply click the button. You have the, uh, the ability to, it's gonna let the end user know, um, you know, making a call to the agent. On the other side, it's gonna say, you have an IOVOX call from, if it's from this IOVOX site we created, or you have a call from whatever agency or however they wanna generate it. Um, you also have the ability in this scenario to, create IVRs. So press one to connect for sales, press two to connect for customer service, three for however you want. Um, so it gives you that same level of flexibility and customization of a traditional phone call. So as we dive into this, you can think of so many different ways that you could do this. So we're showing just a simple call us now feature, but again, any piece you'd wanna know, how many bedrooms, location, uh, if you wanna look at, if you wanna know what they looked at before, I mean, you can gather all that information, add it to the script, it runs, and it's going to be able to connect and show you all that information. That's great. And each of so, these buttons then is unique and individual and can be tracked uniquely right. and individually. Correct. And that's where it really opens it up. We had a client in Cambodia where it's traditionally very expensive um, to run call tracking. They open it up and put 5,000 different buttons on their site, which was very eye-opening for them and also very useful. We have another automotive client who's using theirs on 900 something different uh, listings. Uh, and then we have somebody else who deals with uh, healthcare internationally uh, where they have thousands of, of buttons too, which again, opens it up to one perfect attribution as it relates to that user session because you have everything they looked at. Two, you can now open it up to all your clients versus just a particular client or something very expensive. So for example, Kevin, you asked earlier, is this only for really high ticket or customized complex type solutions, right? Long sales cycles. Well, now with this button, this can open it up to more traditional marketplaces or more traditional clients that have a lower ticket item that, you know, before you wouldn't be willing to kind of put that cost there, um, you'd be worried about it because again, you'd have transparency and people aren't going to be calling as much for lower ticket items. Well, now it gives you that transparency to see first, what are you generating? Two, if it's something you want to share with your clients, obviously you turn the lights on and make sure you guys are getting credit and, and all the attribution you deserve for what you already put that for them. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple on a demo, but again, you can you can visualize, and this could be a contact us form, a call now form, this could be associated to any component on a website that you want to, to track, um, potentially get a lift, or you can run it next to directly to a number, which other clients do to give the, the prospect multiple options. Well, one of the questions that did just come through is it, is this always a phone call or can you have click to chat? Are you recording that as well? Great question. And right now, IOVOX is definitely more of a communication company versus just a call tracking company. And we pride ourselves in particular around our API around call and call data, text, chat, email, right? So anything you can think of for this scenario, next that we're building out, because this is one of our newer features, is uh, the ability to call or text, obviously chat, uh, and then you can add any of our transcription solutions and conversational AI and apply that same logic to not just calls, because the call gets recorded, transcribed, and then gets applied, but same thing with text and chat and so on and so forth. So you can really dive into more of that in-call or in-conversation type data you're looking for. Um, but then the, the last piece that we're going to be adding to this as well, and it really came from more of a healthcare client, uh, they wanted to be able to track video conference. So mm -hmm. how many times did I click to have telehealth or things like that? So 
really the sky's the limit and it depends on what our clients want. I mean, that's what we, again, you know, really pride ourselves on is um, designing solutions that work for our clients based off their particular need versus creating something we think is cool and throwing it out there and then uh, nobody wants it, right? You know, the, the old saying is like, you can have the best dog food in the world. The only problem is the dogs don't eat it. That's the same <laughs> thing here, right? It's, you know, we want to, we want to build cool stuff and we build cool stuff based off what our clients are asking for, because that's what people are asking them for and what they need. From an integration standpoint, uh, you know, customers are always wanting to capture more data. So you're capturing all the stuff that's coming through here. What is the output of this? Can they push into Salesforce? Can they push into HubSpot? Um, are, are there you know, existing integrations there? And so we have a full open API. We already have integrations designed and built with HubSpot, Salesforce, Zoho, Microsoft, um, obviously TabClicks, right? So okay. TabClicks, um, you name it. And anybody that can either push or pull with an API, we have full REST API too. So it's it, it works with pretty much anything. It just uh, sends some documentation. And if we don't have one in place, it's relatively simple to get it completed fairly quickly. Awesome. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, most of the agencies that we're dealing with, and I think most of the people on the phone are uh, U.S. based, um, but we, you know, we have customers that are international as well, um, and I'm sure a lot of the agencies have international customers. On the transcription piece, uh, if you're dealing in multiple languages, it seems like that could get confusing pretty quickly in terms of transcribing it. Um, do you just have one language that it transcribes into, or... Can people set up multiple different uh, transcriptions for that? So we're originally based out of the UK and we actually have offices in the UK and in Paris and in Sydney, Australia and here in the US too. So I believe it's in a crazy amount of languages we have, but we cover, I think it's in the 25, 30, some different kind of languages, but definitely other core languages for the EU uh, as well as uh, the Americas and APAC. Awesome. So it shouldn't be an issue. So you can translate uh, if somebody calls in from Mississippi or from California with the accents? Yes, yes. And actually, transcription is a funny thing. And so is speech analytics in general, too. And it's come so far in the last, I'd say, two, three years. Yeah. Um, it's something, and I've been in this, this call tracking space for about 16 years. And it's something we've been trying to implement as well as pretty much everybody else in the space uh, for, for multiple different reasons. But it's truly come so far so fast in the last i'd say uh year and a half two years and i think our product is up there with with the best of them so uh we like to play with the transcriptions it continues to learn and get better and in particular if you're dealing with healthcare and you got you know things like dermatology and other things it's not used to hearing all the time um but it is it is very good that's awesome that's awesome um all right uh if you want to give me control back i will go through the last slide here as we're getting closer to the end Love the questions sure. that are coming in, guys. If you have uh, other questions, please go ahead and throw them on in there. Let's see if I can do this. No, that's not the right one. No, that's not it either. Kevin, yeah, while you're looking for that too, if you want, I know John has some of uh, the actual reporting queued up too, if you wanted to see. Oh it. yeah, Sean, uh, John, why don't you go ahead and show us what the yeah, output looks like good. there. That's fine. All right. So let me uh, get this here. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. And is, is it the, uh, Tim, is it the IO box dashboard that you see? Yes, it is. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So a lot of what we look at and, you know, to give you guys a little bit of background on our agency in, in specific, um, you know, most of our clients are in the audiology space. So hearing aids, you know, we work with a lot of brands, uh, uh, Beltone, Miracle Ear, uh, Starkey Hearing. So, you know, some big kind of international brands that we work with. And, you know, one of the things that we pay attention to the most is engagement, right? So, um, how long are people on the phone with the person that's answering the phone? So, um, you know, this average talk time piece is something that we pay attention to very heavily. Um, it's really easy within the dashboard to kind of look at, you know, let's just say we want to look at August um, and see our average talk time in August. So it's a minute and 17 seconds. So really our sweet spot is a minute and 30 and over. So if we can keep people on the phone for a minute and 30 or over, um, it leads to a 68% appointment rate. So 
Um, a lot of what we deal with is, like I said, it's audiology, right? So the people have to come into the office to be fitted for a hearing aid and things like that. So um, that appointment rate is something we look at very heavily. And the average talk time is a massive driver of that, right? Um, right. But as you can see by the dashboard here, everything is really pretty user friendly. Um, the other thing we pay attention to a lot is the hangups. Um, so let's look at the hangups for August, just for example. Um, we hit 196 hangups, which you know was up you know 6.8 per seven, 6.87 percent over the previous month. And really, what we're looking at here is is the phone ringing too long. Are people getting to the phone quickly enough to be able then to talk to the prospect and have a conversion? Is the voicemail not set up properly? Um, we deal with a couple of uh, a couple of uh, hearing aid store owners that have you know over fifty locations. So you know managing each location becomes very difficult then. Um, so those are things we try to help them out with. And then if we dig into let's just dig into a specific customer here. Um, we go through and one of the things we do for our clients is we listen to all of the phone calls manually. So, uh, we use, you know, Tim was mentioning the transcription service quite a bit. Um, we use the transcription service, but then we also like to listen to the calls directly because what we find is we, we find context in those phone calls, right? You know, how is, you know, the person that's answering the phone, are they friendly enough? Are they off-putting? And, you know, it's hard being in this business because it makes for, you know, some uncomfortable conversations with, with owners sometimes and say, hey, you know, let's, Trina, for example, um, your West Jefferson location, there's a Gail who's answering the phone there um, that, that, is, that is losing prospects, right? Um, so those are things we can help them out with too, because they don't necessarily have that kind of visibility. So, um, you know, this is kind of the, the view we see, um, on a customer to customer basis. So let's just look at Trina's numbers, um, in August, um, and we can kind of see what she had in August in total calls. Um, so she's one of our, she's one of our bigger clients. Um, so she had about 136 total phone calls in August with 119 unique callers. Um, out of this, uh, she had a she had a down month in in August. Um, there's a couple different reasons for that, but one being, um, you know, we changed some creative. So um, we got that creative switched out in September, and and now we're starting to trend up a little bit, but. Again, you know, call tracking is really at the core of what we do for our clients. And, you know, if, if they're not answering calls the correct way and if they're not fielding calls the correct way, um, it can lead to massive revenue declines for them. So as that happens too, just a quick point, you can schedule alerts as well for any time through the call path, right? So if you wanted to be alerted or it has in a text or an email or whatever it is for um, whatever issue you might hear, it's, it's either a hang up or it's something where somebody mishandled the call, or if you hear something inside that, that contextual component, that contextual uh, piece of the call as it relates to something did or did not happen during the call, you can alert either that location yourself or somebody in an escalation tree. Yep. No, that's a, that's a good point, Tim. The automation is huge. And John, it sounds like you're saying that this not only is helping businesses to close more, more sales, right? Or conversions or appointments or whatever your metric happens to be. But it's also allowing you as an agency to help them identify blind spots they may not be aware of. Like you just said, a receptionist who's answering the phone and may not be presenting the company in the, in the proper light or may need to have a, you know, an extra cup of coffee before she shows up or he shows up, right? Some of these little nuances that we don't see and don't translate in digital campaigns or other ways, this has the ability to expose as, as, a, as a major factor, right? Because there's so much that goes on with the sale. This is a significant component, right? When you're, when you're dealing with people. Exactly, exactly. Well, and you know, for just to gotta give you guys some context too, you know, if, you know, a phone call is off-putting or whatever, you know, the, the most expensive pair of hearing aids that one of our customers sells is like $10,000. So, Ooh. 
you know, they're, they're a fairly high ticket item as well. So, you know, when you look at a receptionist that, that, you know, Kevin, you, you referenced that maybe in a bad mood on a day-to-day basis, um, we're able then to provide context and really, really grab that potential lost revenue, um, you know, before it spirals really out of control. And mm. I'll be honest, guys, this is a conversation we have, you know, right now we have about 42 customers, um, uh, on a month to month basis with us, we have this conversation twice a week. Um, it, it's a conversation we have often. Um, and you know, what we've found is there, there's a lot of other agencies in the space that, that just are uncomfortable having that conversation. But the way we look at it is it's like, okay, my job, when you hire our agency on is I have to protect your revenue. So if I see something that isn't necessarily gaining you revenue, right? Um, it's my job to then have a conversation with you about it, even though that is uncomfortable. And, and IOVOX is one of the things that, that allows us to do that. I think from an agency perspective, it continues to uh, justify you know, your position with those clients, right? You're providing valuable services above and beyond what they may or may not have signed on for. And we all know that revenue comes in two forms, right? new revenue in the front door and then churn. And churn is something that everybody's concerned about, um, but it's it, it often goes overlooked. And if you, as an agency, are able to protect your client on both avenues, I mean, you're definitely a leg up on the competition there. Yep. Absolutely. So not only does this, you know, just kind of as we get to the end, it seems like this solution gives you guys as an agency listening in or brands listening in, the ability to kind of have a new technology that allows you to close more business faster, better than before, but it also helps you to protect the business um, and you know prevent churn uh, and, and look at areas where you may may be weak but don't even know that you're weak in. So, man, talk about a 360 solution! Uh, I think you guys knocked it out of the park with this. We were so happy to have you on and to be talking about uh, talking about everything here. Just as uh, kind of wrapping this up at the very end as self-serving as this is, right? TapClix is, is here to provide a service for you guys as well. So not only are you able to pull in all the details and information um, that we talked about here, uh, but you know, we can pull in all the rest of the data. Uh, let's see if I can share this here. Um, from all the rest of the campaigns into a single platform, into a single format for you guys as agencies. So uh, to really help you get a 360 view of all of the different components and aspects of what you're looking at and, and how they're coming through. A um, couple last questions. Uh, John mentioned leads to higher appointments in audiology. Oh, uh, for, for Tim, is there an industry benchmark for call tracking? So do you see like an average lift with your customers? Is there any kind of uh, benchmarks that you guys have done against that? Yeah, and it really varies from industry to industry. I would expect. And, uh, different times that we've done it, but the one I referenced earlier, and again, just to kind of reiterate, if you haven't done call tracking yet, a lot of it is just turning the lights on and getting credit for what you already generate. So when we did this in property for one of the largest property portals, it was two to one leads came from phone calls. I've seen it as high as three to one in automotive. Now that again, varies from different areas of the world and different areas of the country, so on and so forth. But in general, the first piece is turn the lights on, get the numbers, get the data, because you'll be surprised what you already generate. Second piece of it too, is you expand out, like you turn on SMS text capability. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier, Auto Trader UK, which is one of the largest, if not the largest automotive portal in the world, they turned on and text enabled their numbers and got a 16% lift overall. Um, in traffic from something as large as the largest automotive portal. Um, other things that you can do too in that scenario too, you switch from toll-free to local. Locals tend to do better with so local businesses that you do, in particular with John, dealing with small businesses. People don't want to call it toll-free. They want to call it a local right. number. You add all just these adds things that up. Other level of personalization. And it just adds increase in not just traffic that you're going to see, but then you add things like Web Connect and other variations too. It's really going to be around improving conversion rates as well. So not only are you going to get a lift in overall traffic, depending on what industry it's in, but um, to the quality of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope, hope that answered it. <laughs> yeah. And I think the last, the, the last chat that came in is um, talking about law firms and, 
and drawing towards you know mass uh, mass lawsuits, et cetera. I think that would be a natural as well, right? We see those methophilioma. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but the ads on TV, uh, having a phone number, right? People dealing with medical issues, on job issues, uh, cancer type issues with law firms having a phone mm-hmm. number they can call that gives them that personal interaction probably is going to help with all those campaigns as well, especially if you're looking at a wide variety of, of locations, right? Lots of DMAs pulling in against those. seems like that's right up your guys' alley. Yeah. A lot of people have stayed away from that in the past, Kevin, for that and medical and a few other things too, because they're worried about like PCI compliance, HIPAA mm-hmm. compliance and with us too. Again, the UK based company, we're GDPR compliant, we're HIPAA compliant. We're used to dealing with companies like British Telecom and banks and, uh, you know, and all around the world, banks in France, banks of the UK, banks here. So um, we are set up to be compliant, to work with scenarios like that, law firms, healthcare practices. Um, so it's really important though, that you deal with a, a system that does work uh, in those spaces, because some yeah. of them could give access to people uh, that shouldn't necessarily have access. So I guess that would be something just to make sure that you include in your research when you're picking a partner. Yeah, perfect. Well, guys, that's what we have for you all today. Thank you so much, uh, Tim and John, for coming. Really appreciated it. I think it was very fun to dig into something that's not some not a topic that I think is uh, top of mind in, in our day-to-day conversations, but it should be. And this is really why we bring the nuts and bolts conversation to the different agencies that are out there. So I'm I'm really thankful for your guys' time on it. Um, Like I said at the beginning, everybody will get a copy of this uh, afterwards. So if you wanted to share it around, you had additional questions, you can follow up with that. Uh, IOVOX has a very special promotional offer that'll go out in the email as well. Um, It's massive. So make sure that you look for that email. It'll be out shortly after, um, after we're done compiling the video here for everybody. So Thank you guys. And uh, again, loved to ha- loved having you on and thanks for sharing. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks again, Kevin. Thanks, John. It was a pleasure. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.